Now, I'm going to show you the most accurate and complete nuclear simulation on YouTube using artificial intelligence. You'll see how many people will die. What would happen if nuclear bombs hit cities like London, New York, Moscow? What types of missiles Russia and the US would use? And also you'll learn where to hide if a nuclear war breaks out in your city. Initiation. As the nuclear threshold is crossed, hostilities escalate into a tactical nuclear war in Europe. Russia sends 300 nuclear warheads using airplanes and short-range missiles to hit NATO bases and advancing troops. NATO responds with about 180 nuclear warheads from airplanes. Russia's allies will be involved at this point. North Korea will send some nuclear missiles, not all of which will reach their target. China will also enter the confrontation. Sashualties. 3 million people. With Europe destroyed, NATO launches a strategic nuclear strike of 700 warheads of US land and underwater missiles aimed at Russian and Chinese nuclear forces. The United States launches its main missile. The LGM 30 Minute Man 3 Intercontinental Ballistic Missile is an element of the US National Strategic Deterrent Force. The warhead's yield is 300 kilotons. It is far from being the most powerful warhead in the world but it is very accurate. The deviation is only 100, 200 meters. Because of this precision accuracy, it is able to destroy the target with minimal collateral damage. Russia launches Satan. The missile system with this ICBM is designed to hit all kinds of targets, including those protected by modern missile defenses. The flight speed of this missile reaches more than five miles per second, which provides it with the ability to fly from Moscow to New York in 18 minutes. An important advantage is the ability to use separable warheads and maneuverable monoblock warheads. On board, one missile can be 10 warheads with a power of 55 kilotons, and then the missile can fly 7,000 miles, which is almost equal to the diameter of the Earth. If 10 such warheads attack New York City, it would have a target area of more than 1,000 square miles, and would kill about five million people. At first, nuclear weapons would be used as a method of preventing a retaliatory or second strike. Here it is more correct to speak not about the quantity, but about the quality of casualties. All means of use have priority targets. These are first of all missile launch mines, military facilities, large cities, large industrial enterprises, dams. If power engineers, military government bodies are killed, if power generation and transmission facilities are destroyed, the state will be irreversibly destroyed. In order to prevent the other side from rebuilding, Russia, China, and NATO are striking each other's 30 most populated cities and economic centers using five, 10 warheads in each city depending on the population. Let's see what happens if, for example, a nuclear bomb falls in San Francisco. Fireball as hot as the sun rapidly expands to a radius of more than a kilometer. Anything trapped inside that fireball is instantly vaporized. In our simulation, the epicenter of the explosion is the Civic Center. It's a neighborhood with many government buildings. For those inside the fireball, it's instantaneous. They won't even realize it. Within a five kilometer radius of the epicenter, Chinatown Embarcadero Potrero Hill and all areas west to Richmond will suffer the greatest destruction. Buildings will be destroyed and debris will fill the streets, creating extremely dangerous conditions for everyone in the vicinity. Given San Francisco's population density, the initial death toll could exceed 200,000 people and about 150,000 injured. At the moment when one side realizes that a nuclear war cannot be won, the war against strategic centers will turn into a war of defeat, the main goal of which is to destroy as many cities, population, paralyzing the enemy, causing her maximum damage. Let's see what happens when the Minuteman missile we talked about earlier hits the center of Moscow. At the moment of the explosion, a nuclear fireball with a temperature comparable to the temperature on the surface of the sun is formed in the very center. In our simulation, the epicenter of the explosion is the center of Moscow, the Kremlin, Red Square. Any objects and people directly in the center of the explosion will be instantly vaporized and physically destroyed. This phenomenon is called thermal annihilation. 
The radius of the fireball would be about a kilometer or half a mile. The entire historic center of Moscow will turn into an explosion crater in ash. Only those who happen to be in the subway will be able to escape. Moscow subways have been designed since Soviet times, as well as bomb shelters. In the Moscow subway, there is everything to stay alive for the first time. The question is, what to do next, and where to get out? Within a four-kilometer radius of the epicenter, or three miles, most buildings will be destroyed. The line of destruction will reach exactly to the third transportation ring. All the supreme systems of government, ministries, the State Duma, the Kremlin, all this will be within the radius of maximum destruction. The wave of destruction will reach the symbol of modern Russia, Moscow City. Buildings will be destroyed, and debris will fill the streets, creating extremely dangerous conditions for everyone in the vicinity. Taking into account the population density in the center of Moscow, the initial death toll could exceed 150,000 people and about 300,000 injured. Within a radius of seven kilometers or four and a half miles, the air will be heated to 1,000 degrees Celsius or 1832 degrees Fahrenheit, causing instant third degree burns. Anything within that radius will catch fire. Gas stations, autobiles, power substations, gas infrastructure. Explosive facilities will explode and amplify the effect of the devastation over a vast area. According to various estimates, another 150,000 people would die from burns, debris injuries, or radiation sickness, and over half a million would be traumatized. At some point, global warfare degenerates into an attempt to inflict maximum damage. If the goal is complete elimination, then non-standard targets will be attacked. For example, Russia is considering the explosion of super-powerful warheads in the depths of the ocean opposite major coastal cities. The goal is a powerful tsunami that would simply blow away everything in its path. Also, a nuclear strike could hit Yellowstone National Park. That's where North America's supervolcano, or Yellowstone Caldera, is located. A strike on this place would trigger a massive eruption, resulting in irreparable damage to the U.S. and the entire continent. A Yellowstone explosion could release between 1,000 and 2,500 cubic kilometers of solid particles, most of it in the form of ash. On two, 3,000 kilometers around, will fall ash layer up to a meter on the rest of the U.S. Ash layer up to 0.3 meters. The number of dead in the first hours and days is estimated at 50, 80 million people. All infrastructure will be destroyed. Industry and agriculture will disappear. A layer of ash impenetrable to the sun's rays will appear over the planet. It can stay in the atmosphere for at least two, four years. Airplanes will stop flying. Temperatures will drop. Some reports say three, five degrees. Others say 20 degrees. Sashualtis, two billion people. Stage two, nuclear fallout. Along with the ash, radioactive fallout will fall all over the planet. The horror of radioactive fallout is its ability to spread radiation over a wide area, affecting people, animals, and the environment. Exposure to high levels of radiation can cause acute radiation sickness, which can lead to symptoms such as nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and fatigue. In severe cases, radiation sickness can be fatal. Stage three, nuclear winter and famine. The biosphere has been hit so hard that planet Earth will never be the same again. The ecosystem of the equatorial zone, which is tuned to almost constant temperatures, will be particularly affected. There, even if the forests are not burned, the higher forms of life are likely to disappear, apparently completely or almost completely. But in the northern regions, the situation will be different and very complicated. Here much will depend on what time of year a nuclear war will occur. During the winter months, much of the fauna and flora is in a state of anabiosis, that about seven billion people could die within two years as a result of a third world nuclear war, which confirms the need for global cooperation to prevent it. Let's say no to any war, and it is better to create something new than to destroy ourselves.